never like the one you do. do see me with the crew, I gotta get some food. I see you looking like you do. Had to make a move, make a move. Tell I got a glow, and a Jimmy Joe's break the rules. No, you're not a fool, but I'm in the mood. All right, peace, y'all. It's Nate Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin the Ambassador, man. I'm here, and actually, it's ironic because just last week, before I even hit you up, and I was thinking about it somewhere when my comments was like, yo, you know who Iron Sheik is? You got to get him on. I was like, I was just about to ask the brother that anyway. You know what I'm saying? So so, so this is fate right here, man. We got the OG, man. Not OG because he older. Not OG because he from the streets. OG because he handled his business. He stood tall. And he got knowledge himself. You know what I'm saying? And I never seen him out here. Um trying to steer the youth to do nothing silly. This is Iron Sheik, man. What's going on, my brother? Ain't nothing. Y'all already know what it is, man. Iron Sheik, A.K. Abdullah the Butcher, A.K. Akbar the Rockstar, A.K. Black Adam, Army of the Law, War General, Fresh in the Flesh, BX, we in the building. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, so without further ado, we going to get into it, man. First of all, let the people know where you from. I'm from the South Bronx, Killer Calling, a.k.a. the Gaza Strip, a.k.a. Bucktown, a.k.a. Baghdad, New York, uh -huh. South Bronx, man. All right, cool, cool, cool. Now, now for those of us watching this who don't know who you are, tell us about what it was like for you growing up on Calling as a kid. How old were you when you first started getting involved in the street life? And without, you know, of course, saying anything that you don't want to say, you I'm know what I'm saying? I'm into, I'm into them. You know, um, so some of the things that you was getting involved in. Yeah, well, first, um, I'm 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 from the heart of calling. I'm from 156th Street and calling, building 765. And um, 156 is the heart of calling because that's where Merrill's projects and Jackson projects both start. I'm from Jackson projects across the street from Merrill's, but um, the building I'm from 765. Um, was the same building the Torres brothers lived in. And if y'all don't know who the Torres brothers is, they had the checkmate dope. They just came home. They both did 33 years in jail. Um, I think it's George and Victor um, Torres, but they did 33 years in jail. And the Torres brothers was responsible for putting boy George on. They the one that gave him his start and his break. So they was from my building. And then also, um, they're originally from Gerard Ave, but... You know, when you back then, when the kingpins, you know, they had stash houses all over, you know, mistresses and two and three wifeys and four wifeys. So, but one of the buildings, they lived in my building um, on a high floor. And then um, on the third floor of my building was Tito Cruz. Um, that was another kingpin. And um, Tito Cruz had the, um, the Smurf crack back in the um, early 80s. The, they called it Smurf because they had the powder blue tops. And, um... He wound up doing a bid, going to the feds. And then when he came home, he came out with the Asesino dope and the gold top crack. So, but anyway, that was my first experience, you know, to the street life because I'm growing up on the heart of Cortland. My windows face directly on Cortland. And then the two back windows to the apartment that I'm born and raised in, it faces the upper part of Cortland, like heading towards 155th Street, 153rd Street and everything. So I used to always look out the window when I'm five, six, seven, eight years old. You know, and back then, you know, the kids used to be outside because the whole community raised the kids. So mm -hmm. if we grew, up, if we grew up together, me and you would be outside and it would be jams in the park. We could stay out till 11, 12 at night on a hot summer day. And no problems would have happened because people would have knew, oh, that's Miss Johnson's son, and that's, oh, that's Miss Jackson's grandson. And, you know, everybody was community. It was love. So um, growing up on Corbin in the early 80s, you know, um, when I was young, I seen all the kingpins, you know, and I didn't really know what it was, but I just knew a lot of dudes had nice cars and dudes had nice jewelry. And each block, the way Corbin is set up, each block was a different crew. So 156 was one crew and then 155 was another crew and then 154 was another crew and it was like that on both sides of the street. So one team might be on 156 in this corner and one team might be one be on 156 on the other side of the corner. So it was a lot of rules. Nobody couldn't 
cross over to each other corner or block and sell drugs on it or whatever, whatever. So um, there was a lot of jams in the park. It was tenant patrol. Niggas grandmother sat in front of the buildings. So anybody just couldn't come in any Pacific building because you'd have that sign a book because niggas grandmothers was tenant patrol. So if you coming in the building, they didn't recognize you. Or even if they knew you was from another building, they would be like, oh, you got to sign this book and what apartment you going to. So it was kind of like a legislation, a, doc, a document, like a chronicle to, you know, just to monitor and pinpoint times and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it was candy stores, penny candy stores. It was more family orientated. Nobody really used to lock their door. So, like, if you lived on the 15th floor and I lived on the 10, I was able to just come up to your crib and come in the house because your family fuck with my family and everybody was tight. You know, it was more family orientation. There was a lot of rules back then, too. So there was order. You know what I'm saying? There was a lot of order. Mm -hmm. so, in, so anyway, as I started growing up, I got into the street life around 12. That's 1988. So 1988 is the height. 1988 is the height of the crack epidemic. Slick Rick just dropped the Ruler album. Um, Rakim is live action at this time. Public Enemy is heavy in the streets. They're influencing. And it's jams in the park. It's still, it, it ain't gangs no more. It's crews. So what I mean by that was this, all the gangs like Black Spade, Savage Skulls, all them type of gangs was like fading out. Because a lot of them old timers that was in them gangs from the um, 70s transitioning to the 80s, they got caught up in the crack era. So crack came out in 83. Before that, it was known as Freebase. That's what Richard Pryor was doing, the Freebase. But in 83, it became hardcore crack. So anyway, in 88, you know, it's crews now. It's clicks and crews. So um, one day, me and my man, Chicky Boom Boom, we go on a, we go on a school and Tito Cruz is outside. You know, my whole projects was under Smurf back in 88. Everybody was under Tito Cruz with the Smurf crack. So he had like buildings all over and everybody was eating. It was a lot of chicken. But one day me and my man was on our way to school, but my man wanted to cut school. So when we stopped to cut school, Tito Cruz came up to us like, yo, what y'all doing right now? Um, we like nothing. We supposed to be in school, but we chilling. So he like, yo, listen, sit on this bench and watch this. He said, watch this garbage can. So the way they used to do it back in the days with crack and stuff like that, they would put their crack inside like the little brown bags that the penny candies or stuff would come in in the store and they'd just ball it up and throw it. Wherever it land, that's the stash spot. So if they throw it and it land like in the open right there in, the, like right there in front of the bench, that's the stash spot. So that's kind of like hiding in plain sight. You know what I'm saying? So it's hiding in plain sight because it's in a crumpled up black, brown bag. You would think it's garbage on the floor. You know what I'm saying? So we sat on the bench. We watched it. And when we watched it, we watched it for like probably like 20 minutes. He came back. He gave us $100 a piece. and like, yo, gay, y'all can burn it up. Y'all can leave now. You know what I'm saying? So we left. So we like, oh, shit, $100. Mm. So I'm like, oh, shit, these niggas is getting money. You know, $100 was big back then because I was able to go get me some um some some dunks, some dunk Nikes and all type of shit, you know, at this time, you know, it's Lee suits, it's Taylor suits, it's AJ suits, it's different shit, so long story short, he gave us the $100, we breezed off, so they had a store near the junior, near the school we went to, they had a store called the, um, the Sweet Shop, it's on 156th Street in Grand Concourse, so we went to the Sweet Shop, bought candy and all type of shit, and we just chilled out for the rest of the day, and that was my introduction to the street life, because, I wanted to do it again. I packed bags growing up. So I always had a newspaper route and I always packed bags. So me and my mans and us, we was already used to money because you could pack things. You was able to pack bags and make like $200 a day off of packing bags. But to make $100 in one shot that fast just for doing nothing. Change your life. Like, well, yeah, that shit was a different movie because packing bags is hard work. I got to put all your groceries, canned foods and all that shit in the bag, you know, and stuff like that. And, Growing up, but I, you know, we all was poor and we struggled, but our family handled our handled their business to the extent where we didn't know we was poor and struggling. Yeah. Because we still we still was all fly, you know, we always had food in our stomach and shit like that. So long story short, then eighty eight was my introduction to the street life. And I knew like, oh, I gotta f with this because this gonna get the back. You know what I'm saying? So that that was that, you know what I'm saying? 
And then from there, um, it took off. Like in um, like in '90, my man Chicky Boom Boom, he went with the Spanish niggas. They snatched him up. They was called the Bobo Posse at that time because they used to have the pacifiers in their mouth. But they was getting the bag. So he went with the Bobo Posse. The black dudes snatched me up. So I wound up going to Mar Haven with my man L.A. So my man L.A. was from Cortland. He was from Meros. Rest in peace, my man Lamar, L.A. He was from Meros on Cortland Ave. Meros Projects on Cortland Ave. But he had the yellow top crack in Mar Haven. So I got down with his crew in 1990. And we was in Mar Haven from 1990 to 1994 with the yellow top crack. And that's how I met Party Artie because I always rapped. So when I was down there and I used to hustle, you know, niggas know I was nice and rapping. And they was like, yo, there's a kid over here. He nice from my projects. So I'm me and Party Artie. Then they brought Party Artie to me. And me and Party Artie had battled. And you know what I'm saying? Back then, battling wasn't necessarily coming at each other. It was just each dude spitting verses and we was going to see who lasts the longest. So me and him went like 20 rounds. I spit, he just spit, and I spit, you know, and stuff like that. And he was like, yo, you nice. And that's how I met Party Artie. You know what I'm saying? Back then in Mar Haven, like in 90, 91. So, you know, I was eating in Mar Haven for like um four years. We was the only calling niggas down there because Mar Haven and Pattersons, they never really fucked with calling. Calling been going to war with them since like the 60s. Forever. Like, yeah, since like the God Fisher era, the dudes that was older than me was warring with Pattersons and all that. So we was like, from calling, we from an opposite hood, but we valid down there. And we was all solid dudes. So, you know, we was eating down there in Mar Haven and then I got a better offer. So I came to Colin to, um, I got with a Spanish crew that was on 151 in Colin. They didn't have that many black dudes in their crew. I was one of the few black dudes in like a majority Spanish crew and I was eating with them. And then at this time, you know, when I used to come out my building, one of Carton Hines lieutenants, it was a dude named Ralph, rest in peace to Ralph. Ralph used to um, be engaged to one of my guard sisters. So um, when I used to come out my building to um, go to Harlem and shit like that, I would walk past Carton Hines and him. And he used to be see me and be like, yo, you a fly young nigga. You know, you always fly. You know, you, you stay on the move because I never hung really on the block. I always travel Harlem, Richmond Hill, South Jamaica, Queens, Mount Vernon. I always moved around. So Carl Hines used to tell me, like, yo, come fuck with me and get some money with me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, I'll think about it. But I was kind of nervous because he used to have the super long cheese lines of fiends like them niggas was eating. So I'm on a, um, I wound up catching a YO, um, I wound up catching a YO, um, a YO drug case. I caught a TNT knock, lock me and my man Chicky Boom Boom up. We came, we got bailed out. And then when I got bailed out from there, I didn't stay on 151 no more because I know I was hot. I just got caught, you know what I'm saying, by TNT. So while I was out on bailout, I started hustling on 155 with Carton Hines for a minute. I ain't stayed with his crew long. I only was with them for like two weeks. You know what I'm saying? But I made like five, six racks, you know what I'm saying, fast. Like, and all I did was look out. They used to have 12-hour shifts. The nine-and-a-half crew only had two ships, 12 to 12, and then 12 to 12. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be looking out. Just all right, so hours. so let me ask you a question. Um, Since you speaking on Carl to Hans and um, um, my sister, baby father, used to run with them. He goes by the name of Kendall. Do 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 you are you aware who his brother is? Kendu White. Yeah, Stud Doogie. That's that's Kendu what? That's Kendu, aka Stud Doogie. That's my guy, fly nigga. Look yeah, like yeah. That's that's my niece's father. That's my niece's father. Yeah, he resembled Puff a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, well, I'm gonna tell you what, do right. Do had the do had the blowout, and I had the chemical blowout. Back in the days, Kendu had the um silver. Samurai Suzuki Jeep. He had, the, <laughs> he, had the silver, he had the silver and blue Samurai Suzuki Jeep. So he always respected my swag too because I was a young fly nigga. I'm coming through Pele's, Ava Rex's. The pictures is on my Instagram if niggas ever think I'm fibbing. I got pictures from 92 with Ava Rex's and Pele's on back then when niggas didn't even know what it was. So, you know, Kendu was my man. And, um, Kendu had a baby mother that passed away. Rest in peace to her. Taisha, um, that's my sister. Okay, rest in peace to Taisha. Now, Taisha had a cousin named Makiba. Makiba was from Edenwall. Yes, Makiba, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, Makiba yep. was from Eden. Makiba was from Eden Wall. So she used to go to Morris High School back in the days. You know what I'm saying? When she went to Morris High School, I went to Bronx Regional. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever, whatever. But Kendu was my man. And then I used to be on her back in the day. He found out I used to be on her. Like, yo, that's my baby mother cousin. I'm like, oh, right, that's what's up. You know what I'm saying? I used to try to holler and shit like that. But she always thought I was crazy. Like, oh, this nigga's bugged out. So Kendu was like, nah, that's my little man. He fly. Like, he fly, get money. Like, you know, he, he do what he do. Long story short, um, Kendu's a good dude. Smooth dude, fly guy. Always got to the bag. And, you know, he always played with the bunnies. You know, he was like a ladies type of man, like a puff daddy type of man. Yeah, boy. yeah, he still, he still got that swag now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he always stayed with the chicks and all that. He always had a lot of shorties and chicks and stuff. So, yeah, now nah, that's that dude. That's my guy. He's A1, day one with Carton Hines. They from the same clique. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever. So, from there, um, I made my little money with them. And then that's when he, you know, they had the beef with um Pete and all of them. And at that time, you know, I was active, but I wasn't, that was beyond my, um, that was a little bigger than me. You know what I'm saying? So I know my position. You know what I'm saying? A real nigga knows position. Yeah. So from there, I um, went back with my dudes on 151. You know, I stayed out the way as that played out. And then um, from there, in 95, I, I started hustling on 146 in St. Nick. For a dude named Cuckoo, rest in peace, Cuckoo, aka Larry Pfeiffer, that's his real name. You know, um, I only have, I only hustled under four Willies. L.A. He's dead. Carton Hines, he's dead. And then um, the Spanish dudes that was on One Five One, I really can't mention the dude name because he's still alive, and I don't know if he's active. I don't know what's going on with him. You right, know what I'm saying? right. But yeah, and then the, the fourth dude was Cuckoo. So I was on One Forty Six in St. Nick, and, um, by the Mark Five across the street from Papoose Bar. So Kuku had that side locked down, and across the street was um, AZ, the dude from Paid in Full. AZ was across the street from us. So we was getting money on one side of St. Nick, on 146 and 147, and AZ was on the other side with his brother. AZ got a brother, rest in peace. He was kind of like albino. He looked like he was albino. He was a real light skin. So I grew up seeing the AZ dude, too, that everybody know from the Paid in Full shit. But um, when I got locked up in 95... For some robberies and kidnapping. Um, How old were you at that time? I was um going on twenty years old. I was nineteen, going on twenty. My birthday March 29th. Okay. So yeah, so I got locked up in nine five for some robberies and kidnapping. I was on an island from nine five, like June to nine six February. I bailed out nine six February, and then I only was home three months. And nine six and from nine six February to nine six May, when I was out on bail out, I bailed out so I could take care of my baby mother and my first son. Mm -hmm. He's now he's now twenty seven. But when I bailed out to take care of them, kind of find out she was already cheating and making moves. You know, during the six months I was locked down, she was making moves with another nigga. So anyway, I wound up catching her and the dude, and I almost clipped both of them. So I got locked back up. May 19th, 1996, for two attempt murders in Mount Vernon. So I was going to court in White Plains, New York. Janine Pirro was the DA at that time. Now she was. Now she's a judge on TV. You know what I'm saying? Janine Pirro, she's a millionaire now. But they tra they was trying to railroad me. Long story short, I copped out to the um, two and a half to four and a half in Westchester County. Went up north in 9-7, January 21st. I got my DIN number. And then I came back down to C95 to continue to fight the robbery and kidnapping case. I eventually copped out to that, a three to nine, ran wild, but consolidated. So when a bid is ran wild, but consolidated is this. If I got two two to fours ran wild, that's a two to four and a two to four. That's two separate bids. But if they consolidated, it becomes a four to eight. So I had a three to nine. I mean, I had a, I had a, um, a three to nine. Ran wild, but consolidated with a um two and a half to four and a half, so that added up to thirteen and a um five and a half to thirteen and a half years. I see all on it. I did ten straight. I came home at oh five. Then I went back in on a three year curfew violation. Then I came home at oh nine. I maxed out at oh nine. I ain't never been back. Good, 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 man. Good. Shout out to you, man, for 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 
for not continuing what they're expecting us to continue, man. I I I fought I fought that off too. I fought that off too. I came on 2010. I had to do a violation for like 60 days. But I ain't never catch a new one, man. I I I I I got knowledge itself while I was on Rikers Island. Um, there was there was a there was an officer by the name of Brother X. You know what I'm saying? When I yeah, was I know, in the four building, I know, I know I know Brother X. I I be seeing him at Harlem once in the blue. He on his Black Panther shit. Yeah, it's man. Like like, up, like up, he started talking to us about you know what I'm saying like behold the pale white horse and making us watch the Malcolm X movie and all of that and. And my mind started getting different in there. I'm like, yo, listen, they really trying to set us up. Like, nah, facts, I started facts. thinking differently, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, explain yeah, to me, explain to the people, what was Rikers Island like in the 90s? Because from everything I've seen and heard, the 90s in Rikers Island was probably the most dangerous decade that Rikers Island ever seen, you know, with the influx of the blood stuff and all that other stuff going on. What was it like? What was it like? And what was it like for you? Like, like from what you seen? Okay. So, you know, um, in nine five, I already was active in the street. So in my mind, you know, I'm thinking I'm the, one of the toughest young niggas ever. <laughs> yeah. At this time. But, um, when I got locked up for the robberies in 9-5, I already was Muslim because I got aunts and uncles and all that that's Muslim. So I'm third generation Muslim for my family. I got aunts and uncles and a grand, a grand uncle. My grandmother, um, one of her brothers was Muslim. And my aunts and uncles and was Muslim and then it's me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm third generation Muslim. But I used to be under um a guy named Malachi Z. York. I took my Shahada under his community back in 1990. I heard of that, before. brother. Okay. Yeah, I took my Shahada under his community before they left and went down south and they switched their name to the Nuwapia Nation of the Moors. But when they went from when they went from the Ansar Royal Law community, they went to um the Holy Tabernacle and then they went to the um Nuwapia Nation of the Moors. Now they just call themselves the Nuwapians. But long story short, so I already was Muslim before I went to jail. So when I get locked up at 9-5, they send me the, um, the first house I land in is Mod 1. So when I land in Mod 1, I don't really know the ropes, but I bumps into a dude I went to junior high school with named Prince. They called Prince Bad Boy. His blood name was Bad Boy. So when I came in, he like, oh, shit. You know, he called me my government name. He like, oh, shit, my guy, bro. So I'm like, it was good. He like, ain't nothing, man. You know, I got a phone, boom, boom, boom. I'm like, you got a phone? He like, yeah, man. He like, yo, they call me bad boy in here. He like, yo, I'm blood. I'm like, you blood? Like, what you mean, like, California? He like, yeah, I'm blood. So it baffled me. But he had a phone. Everything was valid. So he wound up going to population first because Ma 1 is already, that's like, um, like an orient city. Yeah, it's like intake, like yeah. an orientation kind of doing. So he went to population first. After he left, niggas tried to play with me in the in 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 the, in the dorm. Like it was my time for it was my time to get on the phone. I was house gang too. I didn't know what the fuck that shit was. He was like, "You'll get the house gang job. You can clean the dorm and you'll get paid for it." So I had joint house gang. So when he went to regular population, it was my like it was one day it was my my time to get on the phone. It was like seven o'clock at the phone. At this time, the phones is rocking straight through prime time started at six o'clock. So it was from six o'clock to click niggas had slot time. So my slot time was seven to eight. So when I, when it was my time to get on the phone one day, it was a 5% of dude on the, on the phone named bright God body nigga named bright. He was from Brooklyn to Queens. So I'm like, yo bro, um, I'm about to get on the phone. He like, all right, yeah, I got you. But I noticed like 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes passed. He ain't get off the phone. I'm like, yo, bro, what the fuck are you doing? Well, I got to get on the phone. The nigga tried to smack me with the phone. Oh, so when man. he smacked me, he did. Yeah, he did smack me with the phone. Like he popped on me, he smacked me with the phone. But the phone like broke on my head. So to outside niggas looking in, it looked like, oh, he hit him super hard. He broke the phone on his head. But really that shit is plastic. It didn't really do nothing to me. And then I grew up in the streets. Like, when I grew up as a kid, niggas got punched in the mouth every day. We fought, scraped our knees. Facts. Yeah, you could, or you not coming outside. Exactly. You can't even come outside unless you going to get it in. So, you know, I already was trained for all this thumping shit anyway. So when fam 
smacked me with the phone. It broke on my head. And then I, I remixed them. I put them in a the blender. I cooked them. You know what I'm saying? I plucked them out. Ping, 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 ping. His vans and them wolf packs me. So they jumps me. Ping, 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 ping. Long story short, um, I'm going to be going to the mess hall like later on that day. My man see like a lump on my head. He like, yo, what happened? I said, yeah, niggas tried to, um, niggas jump me over the phone. He like, oh, when y'all niggas come to population, it's lit for y'all. Boo boo, when y'all come to population. <laughs> so I wound up going to population with them niggas. Like we all went to population in the same day. They sent me to Mar Far Lower, right? And they sent some of them niggas to Mar too. When they sent them to Mar too, my man Master was a rest in peace from Webster. He already was in Mar too. And my man Smurf, um, Grimy Smurf. It used to be a gang on Webster Avenue called the Smurf Mob. It was Grimy Smurf, Shiesty Smurf. So my man Grimy Smurf was in Mar 2. So when he, when them niggas went to Mar 2, they got washed up. You know what I'm saying? Because it was mad Bronx niggas heavy in the four building at this time. Yeah. So now I'm in Mar Far Lower. I lands on the, I lands on the north side. When I lands on the north side, so when I come in the house, the dudes got like all the new niggas lined up against the wall. So I'm talking about the prisoners. They got other prisoners locked up against yeah. the water, adolescent niggas. So I'm like, yo, what's going on? They like, oh yo, you knew, right? I'm like, yeah, they like you had to line up on the wall. I said, for what? They like, oh, we need to, we need y'all to all take a shit. So I'm like, take a shit. What? They like, yeah, 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 because they want to make sure you don't got no razor boofed. They want to make sure you ain't coming into their housing unit with a gun. A all razor. Right. So niggas used to um niggas used to put their razor inside a matchbook. You, ma you wrap the matchbook around the razor and then you put the scotch tape around the matchbook and then you put the matchbook inside a glove and then you have a string attached to it so when you boof it you could pull it back out through the string or the dental floss or whatever you could pull the um, razor out your ass or sometimes niggas, certain niggas could just shit it out you could just squeeze it and the razor will pop out your ass so anyway they were trying to see if I had a razor so I'm like, yo, I'm not shitting, bro. I'm not, I'm not getting on the toilet shitting. I said, I got hands. I don't, I don't, I don't carry razors. And I beat niggas up. So the niggas was about to jump me. So my man Hassan Campbell, who's big on YouTube right now. Yeah, I think I seen, I think I seen you in one of his videos too. Yeah, yo, facts. That's my dude from the street. I, when I was getting money with Carl Hines and them, he was running with Bo and them. So um, when he found that I was dead, it was the same day. He came over with the whole um, Mall for Lower South because he had the shit in the smash. He had his own house. He had the phones and everything. Him and a Latin King nigga named Joel, they had their house in the smash. So he found out I was on the other side. So him and a nigga named Baby Rob from Cortland, they all was on the same side. They all bum rushed Mall for Lower North. They came in the house <clears throat> like because they were not far from each other. The only thing that separate them is the um. The CO booth. So they all, the whole South Side runs up in North Side when the niggas was trying to jump me. So they're like, yo, what's going on? So um, the niggas was like, yeah, this bitch ass nigga don't want to shit out. Um, He don't want to take a shit. Hassan smacks the nigga. Pow. He like, this is my nigga from the town. Nigga, you bugging. He official. Blah, 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 blah. Shoot one on one with him. So the, I went in the day when the dude didn't want to shoot one on one with me. How I smacked the shit out of him. So they wound up getting me pulled to the South, um, to the south Side for a um, Marfalo or South. And then that's how that leads in. That eventually leads into the story when Hassan Campbell was talking about um, we fought the niggas from Brownsville and I knocked the lead out. Rest in peace, Trey Deuce. But I knocked the lead out. We got it in on the north side because niggas was getting drugs and they didn't want to set it out. On the island, if the nigga got a house and a smash, whoever get drugs, you got to set it out to the peoples too. You got to make sure they get some of the bud and all that too. Even if niggas don't smoke, you got you to gotta set the bud out. So anyway... Or whatever drugs you get. But on another note, when I go to the South Side, I got a childhood, another childhood friend from Cortland, a nigga named Chalmers. Chalmers' jail name was Cooks. He the first nigga I ever met that was Crip. So he used to be low. He used to be on his bunk like low key, but he had the razor. So I used to be like, yo, Chalmers, what's up? Yo, why you always on your bed and all that? I'm going to like, I don't fuck with these niggas. I'm like, yo, what's going on? Like, the baby Rob from Cortland, Haas, he from, you know, he Bronx River slash Cortland, they people. He like, yo, I'm a crib. I'm like, crib? Like, what you mean crib? He like, crib, crib, nigga, California crib, nigga. I'm like, oh, shit. So he like, yeah, nigga, like, you know, we outnumbered. Crips is outnumbered. I got beef with niggas. 
I'm like, them, he like, not them, but his bloods, you know, niggas be fucking with the bloods. So at that time, they had some shit called 50 50 Love. So it was niggas that wasn't blood, but they was fucking with bloods. So, but at this time, Hassan Campbell was just straight Muslim. Because he, he tells y'all in his blogs all the time he used to be blood, but that came later. You know, at this time, he's just still straight Muslim. We all Muslim. Mm -hmm. So, um, so the bloods, they was strong. But it only was like eight bloods I can remember in the four building when I was there in nine five. It was Fulo, um, a nigga named Bed -Stuy. It was Mel Murder, the original Mel Murder from Lower East Side. Um, it was a few other niggas, but you in two top butcher shop, you had KK from Brownsville. He went by the rap name Lucky Dawn. Um, it was Puerto Rican Chi Chi from Spanish Harlem slash Forest Projects. Puerto Rican Chi Chi, he was there. He was one of the first Spanish bloods I ever seen because back then you couldn't be Puerto Rican in blood on the island. You couldn't be Puerto Rican in blood because the bloods was going to war with the Latin Kings and the Nietas. There was no Trinitarios at the time. It was Matatans. Matatan mean killer in Spanish. So it wasn't no Trinitarios. It was the Matatans. The Trinitarios didn't come later until Caballo united all three Dominican gangs. Caballo is the godfather of the Trinitarios. He dead now. They killed him in DR. But it was the Trinitarios, Dominicans don't play, slash Dominican power, and the Matatans, when they all united, they was just the Trinitarios. And they always say La Patia. So your generation calls them Patia. Yeah. But that ain't their name. Their name is Trinitarios. La Patia is they greeting. You know what I'm saying? So at that time, it only was like eight or nine bloods. But if a nigga said he was blood back then, he was the real deal because the niggas was cutting COs. They wasn't mm. doing funny petty. Yeah, they wasn't doing funny petty bum shit. The niggas was cutting COs. If they had cut another nigga, he'd be like the first crown for the Latin Kings or the third crown or whatever they rank scoldy. They just cutting like big dogs. They wasn't doing little petty shit, sneak thieving from niggas. And, you know, they was really making movies. So, and then back then, the blood integrity was so strong if you was blood and i was blood and i ain't even know you and i told you your scrap i got beef with that nigga eat him you would just eat the nigga without even asking me no questions so you have bloods taking advantage of that privilege also like it was certain bloods that had beef with as you were saying yeah so um you know when dudes when certain dudes be like oh i churned blood because the spanish niggas had us outnumbered or we was oppressed I don't really understand that angle. I never seen that angle because when I came to the island, most of my issues was with black niggas. It always was black niggas trying to attack me and harm me and shit like that. You know, the boppies always showed me love. Yo, boppy, are you hungry, man? You want a bowl? And the boppies was more um, hospitable. You know what I'm saying? They would give a nigga a bowl of food to eat. Boppy, you all right, man? You want something to eat? They was always love with me. I didn't really dot the racism until later when I landed in C95 and 97, when I went up north from Valhalla to get my number, and then I came back down to C95. But let me backtrack real quick. So I'm on the island in 95. We um we hear the um we hear the Brownsville niggas out. Hassan yeah. went to the adults. At this time, I saw him fighting two two homicides. He goes to the adults. Yeah. When he when he left, it was three COs, three main steady COs for Marfo Low. It was Miss Abdul, it was um, Oliver, and it was a dude named Ruiz, Puerto Rican nigga. They pulled, they pulled the black, they pulled the niggas from Brownsville back down to the house to Marfo Lower. One day I came from court and all the niggas was back in the house after Hassan and us had ran them niggas out. So long story short, when I come back in the um, housing unit, the Brownsville niggas is there. So they plotting. So it's like two days of plotting. It's two days of scheming and sneaky shit going on. Eventually, them niggas wolf packed me. They popped on me. They all jumped me. And the COs turned they back like they act like they ain't seen nothing. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas, them niggas, they fried me. They put me in the blender. They lumped me up. Blah, 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 blah. So now, my, my, um, four main, at the time, four main was ran by a nigga named Johnny Blaze. Johnny Blaze was a was a was a Dominican nigga from the Bronx. He got super busy. He was a predicate slasher. Johnny Blaze was in Four Main, 
and my man Two. Rest in peace, Two. T U E Two. Yeah, me and Two used to do graffiti together. Two was the first Matatan that I ever met. So Two and Johnny Blaze had four main locked down. So one day I'm, we all going to the mess hall because Mar Fall Lower, we got to line up to go to the mess hall. When, before we go to the mess hall, we got to pass um, Two Top Butcher Shop and we got to pass Mar Two. But Johnny Blaze and Two is coming off the visit. So they see me like, yo, what's going on? Boo -boo. I'm like, yo, niggas just jumped me. And um, oh, when they, man, after they jumped me, they packed me up. The CEOs took me to intake. On my way to intake, because you got to go to intake till they find another housing unit, whatever, whatever. They take me to intake. And um, two and Johnny Blaze, like, yo, what happened? I'm like, yo, niggas jumped me. And um, I'm all fall lower. He like, oh, niggas ain't valid there. Tell them, yo, tell them, tell the CEOs you want to come to Four Main. We, you know, the Bronx is heavy in there. Yeah. Anyway, um. From there, I go to Four Main. The CEOs, they wind up pulling me to Four Main. I'm in Four Main for a minute. Four Main and Two Top didn't really get along. So the Two Top Butcher Shop had Lemonhead, Little Rich, um, KK, Raw Man. Um, it was all type of like just grimy, greasy, black niggas, niggas that was there for cuttings and everything. You know what I'm saying? And then from Four Main, I wind up getting bailed out. From Four Main, oh, let me backtrack real quick. When they, when they, when they, when they jumped me in Mar for Lower and then they took me to intake, I had a man named Shorty Bronx. He was on the north side. And Shorty Bronx kind of had the north side in the smash. He was from Minshew Project. He was a boxer. He knew how to box. The north side niggas popped on the south side niggas for me. You know what I'm saying? Because at this time, the, the, the power structure on the north side had switched. You know what I'm saying? So from intake, I went to four main. From four main, I got bailed out. Now, when I get bailed out, I'm home only for three months in 96. I'm going through a lot. I'm stressed. I'm overwhelmed. I'm fighting the case. Boom, boom, boom. I'm trying to get my bag back up. I already know my baby mom's creeping and doing funny shit. So I'm fake popping up the Mount Vernon on a regular, spying on her, trying to catch her, whatever, whatever. I find her diary, all type of funny shit. And that confirmed that she was cheating. The nigga was... The nigga she was fucking with, I wound up seeing him. He denied that. I told him if I see him again, I'ma pop his top. I'ma turn. I'ma turn his TV off. I'ma body him. So he must have thought I was playing. And then I wound up catching him, and I did what I did. Now when they locked me up, and I went to Valhalla, I want to stress this for those who's listening. That's from the five boroughs. When I went to Valhalla. There's two parts of Valhalla. There's the new jail, and then there's the old jail. When you go to the new jail, they got washing machines, dryers, like each housing unit. So like they sent me to 4 Southwest. When I went to 4 Southwest, it was dryers, washing machines, microwaves. That shit looked like a hotel. I'm like, oh, this ain't jail. Like These niggas got TVs, carpet, all type of shit, but it was still jail. It kind of looked like how the jails be looking on ours with the balconies and the tears and shit. But um, but when I went there, and once niggas found out who I was, like, oh, he almost killed fam in Mount Vernon, boom, 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 boom. That's when I found out, really, that upstate niggas don't like New York niggas. What's just the county niggas? Ooh, they hate us. I found that out when I went to Green. They hate us. Yeah, all them upstate niggas, they don't like us. So when I went there, I met a few niggas from Oslin. They had connections to Polo Grounds, because a lot of Polo Grounds niggas used to get money in Oslin. So I ran into a few Bronx niggas on, in Valhalla that got knocked in like Pete Skill and Porchester. They was getting money in them little towns. But them niggas was staying out the way. You know what I'm saying? They was staying out the way and them niggas kept a low profile. So when I went there, you know, niggas found out what I did and nobody didn't really play. Nobody didn't really play yet. But I wound up getting in. They moved me from 4 Southwest to a different house. I can't remember the other house. I think it was 2 Northeast or some funny way. Them shit's got weird names. But when I went to 2 Northeast, some niggas from Peekskill tried to say I sneak thieved out of cell. But what it was was the Mount Vernon niggas did it, and niggas were scared of Mount Vernon. When it come to Westchester County, the three wildest towns is Mount Vernon, Yonkers, and I would say like, um, I would say probably Oslin, or um or New Rochelle. You know what I'm saying? But the niggas from Peace Kill try to say I sneak deep. And it was like three Mount Vernon it was three Yonkers niggas there that was Muslim. And they knew it was gonna go down and they ain't give me the heads up. 
And fam, the niggas from Peace Kill jumped me inside the cell. Because when you were in Valhalla, you was able to leave your cell open back then. And the, 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 the CEO chick that was working at that time was Jada Kiss aunt. Jada Kiss got an aunt named Miss Jackson or some shit. She, not Miss, I forgot her name, but Jada Kiss had an aunt that worked in Valhalla. It was her shift when the Peace Kill niggas jumped me. So I'm fighting with them niggas. We had a rumbling in the cell. Do, 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 do. So she like, uh-uh, no, y'all ain't violating on my tour. She pulls the pin, they come. Boom, they come. And um, Alamo from Brand Nubians, his mother worked there too. She worked in Valhalla too. So they moved me to the old jail. When I went to the old jail, it was mostly Mount Vernon and Yonkers niggas. So they sent me to um, 3G. 3G is across from 3K. 3K is the box. 3K is the box. So when I go to 3K, Mount Vernon niggas try to jump me there. So it's now this constant beef niggas is trying to get to me. It, it's on because they know I um, almost killed the kid in Mount Vernon. So um, was it was it know. because was it because he was from Mount Vernon or was it because they knew who they knew who he was? No, it was because he was from Mount Vernon because I wasn't on a radar. Really, like, you know, like, I wasn't really on Westchester County's radar because I'm a Bronx nigga. I was already known in Bronx and Harlem, but niggas in Mount Vernon didn't know me. Niggas know my baby moms, my first baby mother, but niggas didn't know me. And niggas knew the case because when you catch cases in them small towns, that shit make they little news and they newspapers. Mount Vernon only four square miles. So niggas heard about the situation. And then niggas don't like New York niggas once again anyway. So when I went there, niggas was trying to bait me. At this time, it was a dude named Big Bolo from Mount Vernon there. It was a dude named Crooklyn. Crooklyn originally from Brooklyn by way of Mount Vernon. When he went up north, he had a lot of issues because niggas thought he was Crip because the majority of Mount Vernon Crip. So he got fried in Kasaki. He went to Auburn. He got fried. He was having issues. The bloods was on Crooklyn ass. I seen him like a year and a half ago on 125th one day. He like a short, little, fake, tough, ugly nigga. You know what I'm saying? Word. But <laughs> them niggas tried to line me in 3G. So it was Big Bo, it's a nigga named Crime from Big. And it was a few other niggas. But I was cool with a nigga from Mount Vernon named Buddha Bless. I knew Buddha Bless for years. He got a sister named um, Shira or something. But Buddha Bless got a brother named Bezo. I wound up running into his brother Bezo years later in Kasaki. He had a clique called the Dicks. They called themselves the Dicks. I don't know why. But his brother Bezo was official and Buddha Bless was official. So when Buddha Bless found out them niggas jumped me, he was like, yo, that's my little man. Like, y'all niggas are suckers because he a little older than me. He like, yo, why y'all niggas don't shoot the one-on-one -on -one with him or whatever? But at this time, I'm already in the box. I'm in 3K. So now niggas knew I rapped. So when I'm in 3K one day, I'm sleeping my cell. Niggas is calling me to the gate. My jail name is Manchild. Iron Sheik is my Muslim name. Niggas know me in jail as Iron Sheik also. But my jail name was Manchild. I'm the original Manchild. I heard it was an old timer before me named Manchild, but I'm the original Manchild. Niggas who know me, they know me as Manchild or Iron Sheik. Years later, it wound up being three different bloods named Manchild, but all three of them got cuts on their face. I ain't never been cut in prison my whole bit. Thank Allah, I've never been cut. I always handled my handle and I always watched out for the razor or, or, or the banger. But the other three niggas, that name was Manchild. They all got cuts on their face, and they all blood. I was in Kasaki with one. The OG Geechee Dan had the nigga shot, had him stabbed up, and they packed him up because he was moving funny. And then I met one on a boat back in, like, 08. You know what I'm saying? He had a cut on his face. So, you know, back then, too, a lot of bloods were jack names. And what I mean by they were jack names is there's only one real Gambino that was blood. But there's a billion Gambinos now. A nigga, my name might be Mike Gambino. This nigga's Cav Gambino. You know, a lot of niggas mimic names. It's a thousand nitty. It's a thousand uptowns. It's a thousand um Harlems. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of niggas be having duplicated names, you know what I'm saying, so when a nigga near here the name Iron Sheik, there's only one Iron Sheik up north, you know what I'm saying there's only, it only was one man child so long story short I'm in 3K, I'm sleeping in the box in Valhalla and they like, yo, um, yo man child come to the gate, man, yo spit some, cause niggas know I rhyme, so niggas like, yo come to the gate so I hear nigga rhyming 
But I didn't really like the way the nigga was rhyming. This shit was tough shit. I punch a nigga in the mouth, make his make his face bleed. Boo boo. But come to find out, that was DMX. Oh, that what? was fucking. Yeah, that was DMX, because DMX, you know, he's from Yonkers, but he always was getting locked up. So in 9-6, in 9-6, DMX came to Valhalla. You know what I'm saying? So when he came to Valhalla, you know, I didn't know who he was, bro. I didn't know who DMX was, you know, at the time. But niggas was like, yo, um, man, child, come to the gate, spit something. My man is, you know, our man from Yonkers, he nice. So I hear the nigga rhyme, and I beat the nigga up to his face, bloody. So I, but my mind is still on the case with my baby moms and all type of shit. I'm like, yo, I'm facing a bunch of time. I'm not fucking rhyming. You know what I'm saying? I'm mad. Niggas keep, niggas keep jumping me. Every house I go to, niggas is outnumbering me. Ain't no Bronx niggas here. There's a bunch of Westchester County niggas fucking trying to ambush me. So anyway, but yeah, DMX was in the same house with me in 9-6 and shit in Valhalla. And, um... When I came up, when I went up to get my number and I came back down to C95, this is the most important thing I want to say. When I came back down to the Allen in 9-7, I'm in C95 now. The niggas throw me in the projects. The projects in, the, in, in C95 is all dorms. So I went to four top. Bro, it was like three bloods. It was a billion Latin kings and um, nietas and all type of shit. And um, it was like four Muslims, but them niggas was pussy. Them niggas was like always just eating off to the side. They didn't have no phone time, no nothing. So I come in this house and shit, and it is mad. It's just mad. Um, poppies and all that shit in this house. So I'm like, oh, this shit is crazy. So niggas like, yeah, welcome to the projects. Boom, boom, boom. So C95 had a CEO chick named Miss West. I remember Miss West was a short, dark-skinned bitch. She had a fire body. She was from Brooklyn. But the bitch was blood. The bitch was blood. I'd never seen a blood CO, bro. Wow. And the bitch, came into, the bitch came into the housing unit and spoke to the three bloods. And she threw it up with them. I'm like, oh, she this shit She threw it up crazy. with them? She threw it up. Like, threw, threw the blood shit. No, 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 no. What's up, scrap? You know, no, at this time, they used to say dog. They didn't even say scrap. They said dog because dog meant doing only gangster shit. So at this time, she threw yo, what up, dog? You know, peace to the, you know, peace to the dog. And all that shit, right? So I'm like, oh, this shit ain't safe at all. <laughs> so, um, yo, yo, I, yo. So then it was a blood nigga named Skippy there. But on a low, Skippy was a red dragon. He was a lizard. So the nigga Skippy, all, all I know is I come back from, um, I come back from Wait, wait, wait. Dude. So when you say Red Dragon Lizard, you mean he was messing with them boys? Yeah, he was playing with Doodle. The nigga was playing with Doodle. I didn't <laughs> even know. He, yeah, he was like a booty bandit or some funny shit. So they moved. I had a Muslim brother named Mujahi. He, niggas thought he was M.O. Niggas thought he was like bugged out because he was bald headed, but he had two patches of hair on his head. One was a moon and one was a star. But come to find out, this nigga was a predicate slasher. He was Muslim. He put on. They threw him in my house. So one day I come back from wreck. I see him unpacking his bag. But it's candy on my bed. Like, it's like cakes and shit like that. Like, um, motherfucking, um, uh, I forgot the name of them cakes they used to sell at Commissary. But it's cakes and all type of pies and all that shit on my bed. Fam, I'm hungry. I ate all that shit. You know what I'm saying? I eat the pies, all that shit. So the, I meet the brother Mujahid or whatever. I meet him. He dabs me and all that. The, 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 um, the booty bandit nigga named Skippy, he comes in, the blood nigga. He like, yo, um, he like, yo, yo, young blood, you seen the um stuff that was on your bed? I said, yeah, the pies and all that. He like, yeah. He said, yo, where, where's it at? I said, I ate that shit. You know what I'm saying? I said, niggas left that shit on my bed. I ate that shit. He like, oh, you owe me. I said, oh, you what? I said, but OG, you bugging the fuck out. He like, yo, he like, yo, listen, man, I eat your food. Back then, niggas was scared of that eat your food shit. Niggas would say eat your food. Niggas was getting scared because the blood was putting in a lot of pain. Yeah. But when he told me that, I'm like, oh, I got to make a movie. I got to pop on this nigga in front of the bubble or something because I'm outnumbered type of shit. So anyway, Muja, he peeping everything. He was watching everything. He used to just sit on his bunk and watch everything. So, um... I go in the bathroom to piss. The Skippy nigga come in the bathroom. He like, yo, young bro, you ain't going to um, pay me back for my snacks? I said, what? I said, you bugging the fuck out. The nigga backs out a shank. So he was like fake trying to like on some, you know, on some funny shit. He was trying to take my motherfucking snacks type of shit. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, you, 
I'm like, oh, you want to stab me, OG? Like, yo, I'll bite you. Like, I'll eat your food in here. I'll poop you the fuck up, man. He like, yo, listen, this is what I want you to do. But in the process of him trying to do that, Mujahid comes in, the, 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 the M.O. Muslim nigga. So he like, yo, Ak, you all right? I said, nah, this nigga pulled out a fucking bingo on me. Boom, 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 boom. Mujahid knocks him out. Bing. Drops him. Now the blood's running, fam. We fighting in the fucking bathroom. Now it's on, boom, boom, boom. But now they wind up find out later. Because once we went to Juma that Friday, niggas told the whole community. So now it's, a, it's about to be a war. Niggas is scaring up. Oh, world, y'all got it in with four bloods in the housing unit? Niggas is strapping up for Juma. And like the Muslims, we had this thing called the Talim Circle. That mean the learning circle. So after Juma, we always have the Talim Circle. The Muslims found out what happened. What happened in Four Top? So I'm like, yo, the, the old time a nigga put cakes and all that on my bed, I ate it. He talking about our own. You know what I'm saying? The nigga tried to press me in the bathroom on some gay shit with the banger. Mujahi came in, seen it, and snuffed him. And then the bloods came in and, and jumped both of us. But he was cooking them niggas. He was different. He was a little taller. His shit was, you know, his, his knuckle game was polished. So we didn't come out on the bottom. So anyway, from there, we go to Juma. We let the rest of the community know. They move us out of four top. Now they put me on the cell side. The cell side of C95 is called the dark side. Now, when you go to the cell side, that shit is majority Muslim. Like the Muslims, the five percent, a lot of five percenters was churning blood. You know, a lot of a lot of Muslims were churning blood too. But when you went to the um to the dark side of C95, that shit was mostly Muslims. The Muslims had like strength. The strength was on that side. All the Muslims are shooters that put in work. So um when they sent me the one upper. They sent me the one up. I, I landed there. It was a dude named X there. X used to, Xavier used to own Club Boom in the Bronx. And X at the time was one of the big dogs for sex, money, and murder. So X was in my house. When I pulled the one up, X was already in the house. He had a phone for the bloods. And I had a Muslim brother there named JB. JB was facing two murders and a bank robbery or some shit. He was a part of a crew from Brooklyn called the Ten Thieves. So these niggas... The 10 Thieves, them niggas was like sticking banks up and all type of funny different shit. So One Upper was like a high classification house. So whenever you get into fights and shit like that, your classification keep going up. And, and you're know, um, on the island and shit. So when I'm in One Upper, I kind of find out Xavier was Hassan Campbell's co-defendant at the time. They was fighting like three homicides. They wound up beating them shits too. But... um. I found that out a little later, but Xavier had the phone for the Bloods. JB had the phone for the Muslims. It's a lot of Muslims in the house. Some of the Muslims, one of the Muslims was a dude named Sasquatch. Sasquatch was from the notorious Harlem um, crew called No Fear from 112th and um, Money Avenue. They had Nav and all that, 7th Ave, the No Fear crew. So, you know, some people associate the No Fear crew with Fritz and stuff like that because they all from the same block. But when I landed and went up, a Sasquatch was there from the No Fear crew. My man Linwood Jones was there, a.k.a. Cool Waters. He was a part of the Wild Cowboys. The Wild Cowboys was a notorious crew from the South Bronx slash Harlem. So back in like 96, 95, a lot of the dudes from all the top New York City crews was getting locked up. Some was going to the feds. Some was on the island sitting up for bodies. You know, all type of cases and all that. So 9-5 and 9-6 and all that was a crucial year. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes with names was getting locked up from the streets. Niggas that was putting it in jail. So it wasn't no one group of people dominating because a lot of niggas had got busy. You know what I'm saying? But the bloods was up in numbers. They was growing rapidly. So mind you, remember, I bailed out in 9-6 and then I came back. But when I came back, when the police caught me on a Sunday, they caught me coming from the Black Expo. They caught me on a Sunday, and they locked me up for the Mount Vernon shit May 19th. I'm thinking I'm going back to the Allen because I'm already type established in the four building. So I'm like, all right, I'm good. I'm sorry, y'all locking me up. Right, I'm good. they like, no, you going to Valhalla. So that shit threw me off. So mind you, the whole time I'm in Valhalla, I'm not seeing what's going on in New York City, but the bloods is growing rapidly. So when I come back down to C95 and I'm going to court, one day I'm going to court, I hear B-Bo blood up. I hear that, but the shit sound like it's a thousand niggas saying that shit. So back then, blood used to do roll call. 
they don't do roll call no more, but roll calls, them niggas have like anthems. Niggas would be like Sonic Boom, Sonic Boom, and they'd be clicking, they kicking their cell gates and all oh, you can and all type of video game shit. But <laughs> the shit, was, the shit was organized though. It was in unison. That shit had like some type of energy with it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm coming to Bronx Supreme Courthouse. I see different pins. I see different pins. It's like three pins with just niggas with all yellow and black on, and then it's like three more pins with niggas with just all red on. And then it's like two pins and it's neutral niggas, it's Muslims. So I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on? They're like, oh, that's the Latin kings and the bloods. They going to war. It's like a big war going on. So we got to separate them. All type of niggas had mittens on their hand. But it wasn't the same mittens that when I was in C-74 with niggas had for cuttings and all that. These mittens was different. These mittens was like a long... They was like long styrofoam things that go over your hand. Before, the mittens was like just like black leather mitten gloves so you can't grip a razor and cut a nigga. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I'm coming through court. And um, I see the I see the black kings. I see the bloods. I see the neutrals. It ain't no crips around. If there was crips, they was on Navy still time. And what I mean by Navy still time, them niggas was under the radar, blending in like they was neutral or some funny shit. I wasn't seeing no crips at this time. So when I come through, I see Hassan Campbell. He's they got him in a cage by himself, but he got the mittens on. So I'm like, oh shit, Oxlam Alaikum, what's up? So he like, ain't nothing, man. I'm good. You back here? I said, yo, um, yeah, I caught another case or whatever. He was already slashing niggas. Hassan was predicated up already. They they labeled him a predicate slasher. He had the mittens on and all that. When he came out, he had a handcuff key. I don't know how the fuck he got the handcuff key. <laughs> a, a, yeah, a CO bitch must have gave it to him or something. But Hassan Campbell wound up seeing one of his enemies, and that nigga came up out them handcuffs. I don't know how the fuck he, they call it the Houdini. The blood niggas call it the Houdini. But what it is is niggas be having handcuff keys. So when I seen him, he was mittened up, shackled down. You know how the predicates be shackled down. But they, I think they put a nigga in his cell or something. They put a Spanish nigga in his cell or some shit. He came up out the cuffs, and they was wiggling him, and the nigga was fighting. They getting it on in the cell. I'm like, oh, shit. The nigga came out of his cuffs, and then they took him and put him in another cell. I didn't see him no more until after I copped out to the robberies, and we landed in downstate. You know what I'm saying? We had, me and I landed in downstate together. Now, when I went to downstate in 9-7... Everybody who had a name from every nation was there in 9 7. Robo Just was there, the original Robo Just from um, Stop Jamaica Queens, the big GKB, the big G Sean, rest in peace. Robo Just was there. Non Trade Dead Eye was there. Um, Scar Valentine was there, rest in peace, Scar Valentine. Um, Latin King Heck Tech was there, not the Heck Tech from Cortland Ave. That was the kingpin and the shooter that got killed. No, it was a Latin King nigga named Heck Tech. So don't get them mixed up. But um, it was a Latin King nigga named Hector. He was putting on. He was a predicate. He was slashing. He was letting his razor go. And then it was a, um, a, a Nieta nigga named Gagi Love. Gagi Love only had nine fingers. So one day I'm in the mess hall. I'm, I'm eating in the mess hall. And when downstate niggas come in in a line and they got to walk around the tables to get to their food, to get to the um to the line, to the tray line to get their tray in and their food. So... When Gaggy Love and had Tech come in, just so happened, I'm sitting like two rows over from the Scar Valentine nigga. They pops on Scar Valentine in the mess hall. They tried to eat the nigga in the mess hall. So the Valentine bloods popped off with Scar Valentine. The Valentines wasn't a real big blood set. And they, I think they was like an underrated blood set. But if a nigga said he was Valentine, nine out of ten he was official because it wasn't that many of them. You know, the dudes with the most numbers at that time was like the Stones. It was a billion Stones. Shout out to Ty Guns, OG Ty Guns. That's my day one nigga from back in the days. Ty Guns, the GF for the um, whole Stone Nation. And shout out to my dude, Dick Wolf. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, the Stones were super deep. So they popped on him in, the, in, in Downstate. But everybody was there with a name in 9-7 because we all... Niggas all had cases. Niggas was going up. Some niggas was coming down. It was, bro, it was, it was, it was, it was a zoo. It was a zoo, bro. And back then you had to put on, bro. It was like either man up or be man down. 
So, you know, niggas was putting in work. So, you know, my name wound up getting established and all that. But, you know, to me, I, I you know, I always got jumped. I, most of the time, I always was outnumbered. So it was to the point where four niggas on one, to me, was a fair one. That's how many times, I like, being jumped is nothing. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm fighting three or four niggas, uh, I mastered, I didn't master, but I kind of, like, perfected how to fight four and five niggas at one time and, yeah. and still put two of them out before the other three fry me. You know what I'm saying? I feel you, because I, I was never I was never on the blood shit neither. So, so it's really like, if, if nobody was there to co-sign you, like, if it wasn't somebody from the hood, that was in, that was that was that was controlling the temperature, especially yeah. if you weren't from the Bronx. It, you're gonna get jumped, so you might as well you might as well just get as savage as you can real quick before they get up exactly, on you. Exactly, exactly. And then back then, you know, they they had you know, it's a it's a lot of it's certain stuff I'm leaving out because that'll make this shit like a three hour interview type of shit. But back then too, the niggas had scrub brushes and all type of shit too. So you can grab a scrub brush exactly. and smack a nigga's head with it. I'm talking about the long scrub brushes. I ain't even talking about the little shits with the nub handle. I'm talking about the long shits. And bro, you rock a thaka nigga with that, bro. He you turning that nigga light bulb off after that. It's, it's, it's oxygen from. You know what I'm saying? He's out of there. But, you know, it, it, was, you know, it was a lot of shit going on. And, and when I look back, I'm kind of glad I went through that. I don't ever regret going to jail because it made me the man who I am today. So when I went up north, my first jail was green. Wait, wait, wait hold I, on, hold on, hold on. Before we get into the up north stories, both my... Both my phones' batteries is about to die. So, so I, that's part two then. I, wanna... I got five EP albums. I got, they on all platforms. Just type in my name on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon, Deezer. I dropped an album this year called Beyond. I dropped three albums last year, Pure Energy, Sovereignty 2, and Obsession. And I dropped two albums the year before, Black Adam and Sovereignty 1. So, you know, check it out. I got all a lot right. of features on there. So what I want you to do too is... um. Text me, text me all your socials and all of that and all the links to your music so I can put that in the description. And I'm going to have your right. socials showing throughout the whole video. It's going to be like in the corner or something. All right. Thank you, King. I appreciate you.